Hey, it's uh, Cheddar again, and this is step two of the Adreno Nixie Clock for Absolute Beginners based on the Instructable blog. If you need an introduction to it, go back and check out my first video in the series. But this is step two, how to set up your power supply. So, <clears throat> I've got the uh, AC to DC adapter or the power bank or the power supply for the clock. Um, and this is the first thing you're going to need for this step. You're going to need your power supply, some wire cutters, a wire stripper, and some terminal connections, and your multimeter. So, for to get us started, I'm going to say this is the point to where you can actually shock yourself. So, if you are... You know, if 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 you're doing this, be careful. Don't uh, you know? Don't shock yourself. Nobody wants to get shocked, and it doesn't feel good. It's happened to me quite a few times. Um, just be careful. You know, nothing's plugged in. Obviously, you're fine. So, <clears throat> essentially, you're using this. This little power supply comes with you know a multi-cord in. I assume because it's for security cameras. So you know you. This is called a barrel jack. You plug your barrel jack in, and then you plug this into four different components. But you don't care about that because all you're doing is powering one thing. So, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to clip this wire right here at the end. And if you don't feel comfortable doing that right away, um, you can always test on one of these other four connections. Actually, that's what I'm going to do to begin with in case I make a mistake for the video and have to go back and re-upload. So it's pretty simple. Take your pair of wire cutters, clip right behind the uh, the barrel jack. You're just cutting it off. You know, bought a new product, now you're destroying it. That's just how we roll. Take your wire strippers, go ahead and then start stripping back just a little bit. Now, it might take me a second here. I've got to get everything adjusted properly. And what you're looking for are these two wires in the center. You know, you've got a, a blue wire here. That's really black. It's your ground. And then you've got this red wire for hot. What you want to do is you want to get a good amount of wire on there. So now you've got your, you know, your hot and your cold or your ground and positive. <clears throat> and this wire is really thin, so you're going to have to uh, strip a good bit off for your terminal. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that end right there. Let's see if I can strip that. Take a little bit more off than that. Getting them both at once. Be cool. All right. So as you can see, I'm actually going to take a little bit more off here. I just want to make sure I've got plenty of wire to work with. <clears throat> as you can see, I've uh, stripped this wire out. Now I've got this copper core um, what you want to do is you want to take it twist it like that so you have a nice good braid that's not frayed at the ends do that for both of them well that didn't work out as good as I'd hoped but you get the idea here you just want to try and get them where they're workable And once you have these exposed leads, what you're going to do is you're going to take one of your terminals. I suggest doing the same type of terminal for both sides. So if you use like the, the clip end, you know, do a clip on both sides. Or if you use like the shovel end, do a shovel end for both sides. So what you do is when you get that wire out and get it braided, you're going <clears> to, <throat> because this is such a thin wire and this terminal is such a big hole, you want to, you can sort of, you can run into connectivity issues if you just stick the wire straight through and crimp it. You want to make sure that you've got lots of surface contact for your wire. Um, so what I like to do is I like to bend my wire in half once, like that. So you can see I've doubled the wire down and it's easier to twist as well. 
and then do that again so fold it twice just like that and you know twist it in on itself and you got like a nice fat in there for um for sticking in your terminal and you do that to both sides time here, folding it down, twist it up, and voila, I've got two terminals, I've got a hot and a ground, see what you're going to do is, I'm going to use a clip end, and I'm going to, you can see the little hole there at the end, I'm going to take it, I'm going to thread it through, to where it's within the clip, and then take it and my um, my wire strippers have a crimp tool on the end as well so I'm going to take it and crimp it down You know, this part just takes some time. People, you know, takes time to just to figure out how to crimp stuff and get all that going on. And if you have an electric crimper, you know, that's always good too. I like to crimp throughout it, just pushing it down, making sure it's nice and tight. And then, you know, you're going to want to pull on that wire just a little bit to make sure that it's, um, you know, nice and snug. It's not going to just pop out for no reason. And as this first one, you can see, I've actually left a little bit of a, a little bit of extra wire there, that brass that's hanging out. I'll probably end up redoing this just because of that, because you don't want any kind of copper to be um, showing after the um, behind the crimp. Because you know, if that touches like that, then you're going to see a uh, a you, you could see a short or something. And you know, if you have like a metal case, then you definitely don't want that. I'm going to grab another clip in here. And the same process goes for your ground. You're going to take it, thread it on through, stick it in your crimp tool, crimp it down. And like once I said before, you know, you can crimp it at a couple different spots. Make sure you got good, good contact. Give it a little, little pull, not too hard. Just a little, you make sure it's snug. Um, <clears throat> now, I've done this on this actual, you know, the snake end or this multi end. I'll, for my final clock, you know, I'll, I'll clip, I'll crimp this here. But just for video purposes right now, I'm just doing it right here. Um, now that you have that. You, know, you take out your fancy multimeter, and while I've got this showing here, I'm just going to turn my multimeter on over here to the what's called the continuity detector, which it looks like a, almost like a Wi-Fi bar or something, and it'll beep if I have electrical connection. So I'll actually for this one, I'll just touch it right there at the base of the wire, and then touch here. And I can hear it beep, so I know that I've got uh, continuity or I've got electrical flow. I'll just try that again for this other one. Well, if I can do it. And I can hear my beep. It's good. Um, a side note on the barrel jacks. As you can see, I've got a pin on the inside of this and this outside shell. I th believe that you the inside of the pin is positive. So if I stick my, you know, my negative 
in or one side of my multimeter into the actual barrel jack. I'm touching the shell and the inside pin. Then I can also do another check. So I've got continuity there and continuity there. So these are actually successfully um, put on. And then what you want to do is you want to actually check to see if you do have electricity flowing. So I'm going to go grab an extension cord and be right back. All right, I've got my extension cord here. So um, I'm gonna take my power supply, plug it in. I've got a little green light showing here. So definitely have some power. And then I'm gonna take my, you know, this part that I've, you know, destroyed. I'm gonna plug it in. So at this point now, I've got a live wire. So don't get shocked at this point um, but I need to check to make sure that you know I've got voltage or current and all that good stuff flowing so I've got both my ground and hot um, what you're going to do is you're going to take your multimeter you're going to set it to DC so you're looking for DC volts um, this is an AC to DC converter so technically it should be converting this AC current out of my wall to DC I'm going to stick my ground pin into my uh, negative terminal and I'm going to take my hot pin I'm going to stick that in my positive terminal and see what we get and if you I would just, the video is kind of grainy but if you can read that it says 12.21 volts so it is successfully converting my 120 volt AC to DC at 12.21 volts and that's an important it's important to check that to make before you get to your next step because you want to make sure that you have the correct volts coming out of this power supply before you plug it into your step up chip because if you plug it into your step up chip you're going to then have to, once we get to that point you're going to have to figure out the setting for your step up chip so up to this point you should have your power supply plugged into a wall outlet an extension cord however whatever um, plug that into your to your end here and then probe it after you've made terminals and check to make sure that you've got about 12 volts coming out of it. Um, it might vary a little bit. I'm sure that there's you know small differences at the micro level between uh, different each product made. But just make sure you've got your uh, your volts. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, redo this and instead of using this this cord, this multi-ended cord, I'm going to go ahead and um, <clears throat> cut it off the main one because I don't like having all those extra extensions coming off. That just makes your final product messy. But I'm going to go ahead and go back and uh, redo what I just did with this main cord. <laughs> 